Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Virginia Franco. As you know, Virginia, our listeners are mostly college students and Mm -hmm. young professionals. So write in the demo of your kids. I know you also write resumes for first timers into the job market in addition to the C-suite and executives. What are the most common pain points that you have observed among the students that you've worked with in terms of how to get started in writing their resumes. So the first thing that I think is the biggest challenge for undergraduates is that they don't, they're not clear on their target. The information that I extract when someone is targeting maybe a role in sales versus someone who wants to do finance and accounting is very different. And it is, I I know a lot of kids feel like, well, I'll just take anything. I'm open to anything. But unfortunately, by remaining open, the documents you write, will they appear more diluted. And so the more clear you can be on your target, the, the greater the strength of your resume. The other challenge that I see common to this age group is that they don't consider, they don't consider all of their experience or they don't think to include all of it. So they'll think about well, what did I volunteer for? What were my internships and what were my summer jobs? But they undervalue maybe coursework that they took or papers that they wrote or group projects that they did. And oftentimes those, the stuff that you do in class really aligns with what you're targeting. And so that's one of the, when I do interview kids, I do dive in and ask them, what, what papers were you proud of? What about group projects? What was the topic of it? And so we, that, that sort of allows me to include examples of how they've been able to put their skills into practice, at least theoretically. We're going to get into this a little bit later when Virginia unpacks her process. But the reason that she mentioned when she interviews them is that that is her methodology. She doesn't have you fill in a form or do anything Mm -hmm. like that. She spends 90 minutes with you going through your story, asking great questions to help you surface the most relevant information for the types of jobs and industries you want to get into. What do you think are the biggest mistakes that college students and recent grads make, Virginia, in terms of writing their resumes? I'm guessing one of them is they water end up watering it down because they want it to be one size fits all. So that's definitely one. The second one is what I alluded to earlier, which is that they don't they don't consider any of the learnings or the practices they got as part of their coursework in their they don't think to include that into their document. Very lastly, it's a taller order for new grads than it is for people that have been in the marketplace a little longer. But try to when you're thinking back on your experiences, I always ask people to think about what they've been proud of, or maybe think about if if they were able to make an impact in the role and then go about trying to show that, that is much more powerful than detailing your responsibilities. Right. And they're much more, it's much more memorable when you write it that way as well. Show it, don't tell it. Or what, what, what is that? There's like a short. Yeah. So instead of saying, I'm just trying, you know, responsible for, 
I don't know, greeting customers. That's your responsibilities. But if you said that you, I remember someone that I work with that had worked for a restaurant and they had done it for three summers and they had, the restaurant had a lot of repeat clientele. So that recognized this person by name. So we were able to sort of work that into the bullet as an example of their customer service. Your future hiring managers and recruiters want to see that you are about, as Virginia has already noted, impacting the role that you get, that you want to move the needle. So you have to show them that you have that mindset and that you've got a track record. What advice can you offer these young new hires (laughs) who can't afford to pay an incredibly seasoned resume writer such as yourself, Virginia? What should they do? Could they do to help them stand out? So what I would recommend is going through every aspect of their schooling or what they did while they were in school. So that should include your courses, your uh, projects, your volunteer work, your any leadership that you had in the school, any summer jobs, any work you did for free for anybody and reflect back and ask yourself, what was I brought on to do? what did it look like when I left and what am I proud of and how did I make that impact? Those questions should provide you with the information you need to write your document. Beautiful. And let's put in a plug for your other company, the job search journey. Do you want to let our listeners know what's available? Yeah, I would love to. So we, I'm a co-founder of JobSearchJourney.com, which is a digital marketplace, sort of like an Amazon or an Etsy for job search. And it contains all sorts of DIY materials to support people in all aspects of the job. And there are several products that we've created for new graduates. So there is, there's resume templates, there's interview scripts, there's some guides to help you navigate the the quote unquote hidden job market, which just means figuring out who you know, who you need to know and how, how to reach out to them, what to say. The documents are all created by people that do this for a living one-on-one. Everything we, all the resumes are designed to be written for human, read by humans, but also by applicant tracking software systems. You can trust that the documents have been successful before. Excellent. You, I would say, distinguish yourself as one of the top resume writers in that you call yourself a storyteller in the resume writing space. And I think that's a really interesting frame because when you look at the average resume, you just look at that piece of paper, it seems at first glance to just be kind of the facts. It's not a narrative. But the more I think about it, that's just a very literal way of approaching the document. Could you break it down for our listeners, Virginia, as to how they can actually be telling a story through the positions they've held and the activities that they've engaged in, what they choose to include and what they exclude, right? Because that's as important Mm -hmm. as what you put in to help the employer connect the dots between their experiences and then the job that these hiring managers are looking to fill? Oh, so, so many great questions. The, what I always think about or try to remember is that a resume is your brochure. It is not a blueprint. So to your point, it does not contain every single detail of everything you've ever done. It is like a highlight reel. Or a brochure. Think about with a uh, if you're going on vacation, you don't care about every detail on the room service list, and you know instead you're looking at high level amenities and things like that. So the resume is that same sort of guide. In terms of how storytelling comes into play, think about when you go back. You know, as I said, you go through and you think about what you're proud of, how you left your mark, and you structure your bullets in a way that tells you know, this is the challenge I was brought in to do. This is the action I took to address it. And this is the result. When you think of your achievements within that framework, that's how you turn responsibilities and accomplishments into little stories 
the trick though is that that challenge action result or car framework works really well when you're elaborating in an interview but with writing you need to flip how you write it and you actually lead off with the results and then you go into to the other parts because skim readers usually start at the beginning of a sentence and they don't always get to the end. So you lead off with the good stuff, like grew revenues 3% or 30% by doing X, Y, Z. I love that. I heard you make this point in another interview that you did Mm -hmm. on someone else's podcast. And I was like, oh my God, that is such a valuable insight because it's one thing if you're sitting in an interview and you're telling that story with the challenge action result framework Mm -hmm. because you've got their attention. But considering that the average amount of time that a hiring manager recruiter spends on a resume is seven seconds, put the good stuff up top. I mean, you know, closer to the left side. They might not get to the end. People are, we read these in very skim fashion. And so, you know, when you think about how much more powerful it is to read a bullet that says, grew revenues 30% by doing X, Y, Z, versus saying responsible for revenue growth, which is, that's just a boring, boring responsibility. And then the way you'd say it in an interview is, I did X, Y, and Z to achieve 30% revenue growth. Yeah. And I love that earlier in this interview, when I asked you about one of the biggest challenges or mistakes that that students make, and you said it's lack of focus in their resume. So when you have a focus, a point of view in your resume, the story is very clear. So if you're going out for, as you mentioned, a sales role, the experiences that you've had are going to want to fall into a sales related function. That's right. And then the courses that you list as highlights, you're not going to list your finance courses if you're targeting sales. Everything is within the frame or the lens of what you're targeting. Yeah. I don't know if you're applying to a company that serves a multilingual community, let's say a Spanish speaking community, the Mm -hmm. fact that you took Spanish language courses, you're going to want to have that featured right front and center so that everything falls into that story that you are somebody who can sell, who can speak Spanish, who is motivated, who has had impact in that role. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.